We are here on the beautiful campus of the Texas Biomedical Research Institute, and I am so excited to be with you, Dr. Turner. Thank you. And maybe you could give us a little insight of, of the variety of research you all are working on here. Absolutely. That's a real pleasure, and I'm so glad to host you here. We have studies on malaria, on schistosomiasis, on heart disease, diabetes, tuberculosis, HIV, Zika. It really spans uh, pretty much a large group of infectious diseases and also diseases of humans that make us more susceptible to infectious diseases. Dr. Turner, out of all of these different research projects you're doing, I mean, they all sound so important. How do you prioritize which one is going to have the most effort and the most uh, funding, maybe even that? Yeah, and so initially we prioritize what our institute focuses on. So we have defined ourselves as an infectious disease institute and one that studies diseases that make you susceptible to infection. And then from that, it's really about how we recruit our faculty and what they work on. So the science is driven by the faculty's very specific research interests. So we would recruit someone in that works on malaria or influenza, tuberculosis and so on. And that really dictates what the research will be on our campus. And then secondary to that, and really important, is the funding that they can get. So science uh, at a research institute is funded through grants and our scientists are writing grants and then being awarded grants if they're proposing excellent science. Uh, and that really does dictate what becomes our focus. So wherever the funding comes from will really determine whether a scientist can work on that project or not. So many science research institutes are funded by universities, but that's not the case with the Texas Biomedical Research Institute. It's privately funded. How does that affect what the research institute can do or not do? It's a great question. Um, really, there are two answers to that. One is because we're not supported by a university, we have to find our funds from other places. So we really do rely on donors. Uh, we rely on our endowment. And we also rely really very much on our scientists being really good at grant writing and doing outstanding research to get funded. But the other side of that is it allows us to be really, really nimble. We don't have the bureaucracy. Uh, red tape of working in a state institution or a really large teaching university. So we get to make decisions quickly. We do due diligence. We think about all the risks and benefits, but we can move from you know, an, a concept through to reality in a really short period of time that might take years elsewhere. And that allows us to be very, very competitive. Dr. Turner, how is it that the forum really helps or enable getting some of these, these programs off the ground? It's so important. Uh, we always want some seed funding to start projects. So it's really important in so many ways. Our scientists uh, have really amazing ideas uh, about how to cure a disease, and they don't have the funding to support that initial kind of seedling of an idea uh, before they can turn it into something big that we can get federal funding from. So the forum funds are just enough that enables them to get early data in the lab that then allows them to write grants to make that a bigger bigger grant and to bring money into the institute. So it does a couple of things. One, it helps the institute because it turns science into a big project that funds us. And the other is it helps the career of the scientist. So they can publish from it and get funding and it increases their kind of footprint in the world of research and their importance. Uh, so that works for our faculty, but you also fund some of our postdoctoral scientists and that allows them to have their own money for the first time ever in their career to do something they want it helps the lab that they work in, um, but it allows them to go out and get recruited somewhere great. And, and it sounds strange to think that you're giving money that uh, might leave the institute eventually, right? The science would leave. But what it really means is our trainees who use that money do great science, then can go to really good labs and they can go and start their own lab and our reputation expands outside of San Antonio. Dr. Turner, um, you light up when you talk about the Institute. What is it that you're most proud of? I, I love its trajectory. I, I think uh, I've been here three and a half years and just seeing how committed the staff are and how energized they are about the new mission of the Institute uh, and the energy of Dr. Schlesinger, which is really easy to get behind. Uh, and we've made such progress and everyone's really invested in the success of the Institute. And so my job is to support that science and do everything I can to help science thrive on our campus. Uh, and we have such amazing scientists and scientific staff and all the way to animal caretakers. Everyone on our campus is like, really invested in the success of this place. And I love seeing that energy every single day.
Dr. Turner, thank you so much for everything you do and all the work that the scientists are doing here. We truly appreciate you and, and we're gonna keep you all in our prayers as y'all continue to conquer the world and save us from infectious diseases. Thank you, thanks so much. At Mission Park and Mission Park Cares, we'd like to bring you more programming each and every week. Yes, just subscribe here or catch us every Sunday morning on Fox 29. And remember, at Mission Park, it's our mission to care.